We will begin today's lesson with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O oh my God, you love me. You're with me night and day. I want to love you always, in all I do and say. I will try to please you, Father. Bless me through this day. Amen. Today's learning objective is to write in roll. Let's look at this sentence from the book The Hidden Forest. It was a world of weeds. By just looking at the words, it's very hard to decide what emotion this is trying to convey. So let's try and read it out loud using different emotions. Let's look at these emotions here. We have frustrated, stunned, confused, angry, depressed, confident, excited, tired, anxious, amazed, shy and bored. I'm going to read this line again, but this time I'm going to read it using different emotions and I'd like you to try and guess what emotion I'm trying to convey. It was a world of weeds. That's right, I was trying to convey the emotions amazed or stunned or excited. It was a world of weeds. That's right, I was trying to convey the emotion of someone who was confused. Oh, it was a world of weeds. And I'm sure you got that one. I was trying to convey that someone was tired. Here's a quick task. With your home teacher, read this sentence out, but try and convey an emotion from the next image. Your home teacher must guess the emotion. Here are the emotions. Pick one and read the next sentence, trying to convey that emotion to your home teacher. You can try this three or four times using different emotions. Today we're going to try and use show, don't tell. This is showing how characters feel. Look at this photograph. How do you think this person is feeling? What makes you think that? I think this person's feeling angry. Now we can use inference Iggy here. Could they be feeling another emotion, but still look the same? What do you think? Now, look at another photograph of the same person. How do you think they are feeling now? And what makes you think that? I think this person is feeling sad. Now, Inference Iggy has asked us a question. How do you know that their mood has changed? Make some notes in your home learning book now. Finally, look at this photograph. How do you think they are feeling now? I think the lady's feeling curious or thinking over something. Now, Inference Iggy's asked us another question. What are they doing with their face and their body to make you think that? Make some notes in your home learning book. People rarely tell you how they are feeling using words. More commonly, they show how they are feeling using three key things. 
their facial expression, their body language and their actions. People's body language can tell us a lot about how they're feeling. The way that you move your body and pose to show your attitude and feelings can tell us a lot. As you can see here, the young lady's body position and posture shows that she is scared of the dog. People's facial reactions can also tell us a lot. Facial reactions are the way that you move your face to show how you are feeling or how you are reacting to a certain situation. So here we have three different types of facial reactions and facial expressions. Here we have a young girl who finds something extremely funny. We have a boy that is happy and a boy that may be a little bit sad. They all have different facial expressions and that's helping us to identify their emotion. Finally, we have our actions. These are the things that you do and the way that you interact with your surroundings to show your attitude, feeling and reactions to a situation. Here we can see the girl's actions are showing that she is angry as she is kicking the metal tin. If you were asked to imagine somebody who feels tired, what picture springs to mind? What is their facial expression? What is their body language like? And what actions are they doing? Pause the video now and have a think. If an author was trying to convey that a character is tired, they might write, he looked expressionless, but his mouth drooped downwards at the corners. His shoulders slumped and his arms hung lifeless by his side. His head slowly began to tilt downwards. He opened his mouth and yawned, like a lion roaring in the savannah. His heavy eyelids lowered. These are all ways to express that a character is tired, without saying the boy was tired. This is far more descriptive and far more helpful for the reader If you were asked to imagine somebody who felt cold, what picture would spring to mind? Again, think about what is their facial expression, what is their body language like, and what actions are they doing? Pause the video again and have a think. If an author was trying to convey that a character was cold, they might write, her brow was furrowed and her eyes narrowed as if she was struggling to see. Her shoulders touched her ears as her whole body tensed. She crossed her arms defensively, rubbing her hands together as if wringing a cloth. Her teeth involuntarily chattered as she turned her back to the harsh wind.
When trying to show your reader how your character feels, keep in mind that lots of different feelings can share the same traits. For example, someone might get red-cheeked if they're hot, or they are shy, or they're embarrassed, or they're very angry. So it's important to always be clear with your description so that the reader knows exactly how your character feels. So as we're going to look at emotions today, you're going to need your emotions graph from yesterday's lesson. So make sure you have that handy. Here's today's main task. Using the graph completed yesterday, write a diary entry from the perspective of Ben, drawing on the idea of show not tell to express the emotions he is feeling. Here's your success criteria today. I'd like you to express a character's emotions using show not tell. Write in the first person. Use the graph from yesterday to track Ben's emotions during the diary entry. And use adverbial phrases to show the passing of time and place. Once you've completed the main task, why not try this challenge? Write five sentences that use comparing and contrasting conjunctions to compare and contrast Ben's emotions from the beginning to the end of the story. Well done Year 6, that's the end of another home learning lesson and the end of the week. I look forward to seeing you next week for some more home learning lessons.